What's up, everybody? It's Taylor Twalman from Major League Soccer and Apple TV. The regular season's coming down to the home stretch, where we have seen the cream rise to the top over the past month or so, along with the bad seasons being put to bed, all in the West up to this point. San Jose, Kansas City, and St. Louis City. Soon, Chicago and New England from the East will follow them. This is the time of the year where you have to see who is hitting their stride and who is falling off. MLS history will tell you that those are in great form in mid-August all the way to the finish line have a great shot of MLS Cup. Just ask the Seattle Sounders of recent times or even this year. Speaking of, two losses in their last 13 MLS games, which leads me to think about a few things as we head to the finish line. 12 minutes takes. Let's start with the five-time MLS Cup winners, LA Galaxy. They've missed the playoffs five of the last seven years which is remarkable considering they've had some of the biggest names in league history. Zlatan, Chicharito, Giovanni Dos Santos during that span. And so this offseason, they went out with a real purpose led by Will Koontz, who left their rival LAFC in April of last year, then became their general manager at the end of 2023, and he goes out and spends just over $18 million for Joseph Paintsill and Gabriel Peck. You couple that with Jovalich and Pooch, and they've become the first team in MLS history to have four players with 10 plus goals. Having multiple game winners, guys who can get it done in different ways, makes it that much harder to defend. And I haven't even gotten to Marco Royce and Diego Fagundes, who complete the picture. They've got a seven point lead in the West with three games to go. They're the front runners to win the West. They've only lost once in 16 games at home. I get it. They give up goals. They look to struggle to defend in transition. But as they proved in the last El Trafico, good luck trying to stop them from scoring three plus goals in a game. They've done that 12 times this year. The race for the final two teams in the East is absurd. Six teams within three points of each other. That includes Nashville that have played themselves in a playoff contention after losing eight games in a row. I'm not judging anything B.J. Callahan does until he at least gets a transfer window or two, but they're unbeaten in the last three, and he's unlocked Sam Surge on some level because he's got three goals in his last two games. But you're probably waiting for me to tell you which two teams make the playoffs. I have no idea. Philadelphia Union have the pedigree in history, but this looks like their last hurrah as a group. Is that motivating? Maybe. Montreal with an easy schedule. They got two games at home with one of those against the worst team in the league in San Jose. Atlanta United have four games left. Three of those, they control their own fate, are against teams they're competing against for the playoffs. DC United, they got three in the row, but they've got Benteke who leads the golden boot race in the moment. And finally, Toronto. They've only got three games left with their final game on October 5th at home versus Messi. And that may be a must win. For MLS in a league of parity, this is exactly what they wanted by adding the play-in game. But let's put this on the record. Whoever makes it to the play-in game will not do anything in the playoffs. Fact, not opinion. I love having a good debate, especially when it comes to MVP and MLS. Suarez and Messi have their own cases, own arguments, strong ones. But when it's all said and done, that is the most complete and deepest roster in MLS history. I think that hurts their cases on some level. Cucho Hernandez is the figurehead by which everything Wolf or Nancy wants to do with his team in Columbus. And if they make a run at Miami for the Shield, he has a case. Luciano Acosta, the reigning MVP, whose argument for the award in 2024 may be greater than the one he had last year when he won, considering the last two years, 59% of the goals FC Cincinnati have scored, he's contributed to. But, and it's a big one, Evander has my attention. And he may get my vote. I get it. Three players on Portland have 14 plus goals. But anyone that's watched Portland would tell you none of it happens if Evander's not unlocked in the way that Phil Neville's done so in his first year as a manager. They've scored 63 goals, second most in MLS. Evander's contributed to 33 of those. That's a club record that broke Diego Valeri's record in 2017 when he was named MVP. You're not going to get me to say he's the best 10 in the league. Sorry, Phil. But my word, he's as exciting and valuable as any other player that is not getting enough attention. One of the best MVP conversations this league has had in a long time. Coming into last week, Miami was in the driver's seat to not only win the Supporters' Shield with ease, but also set the record for most points. Both things I'm on the record as of three weeks ago saying they will do both. But two consecutive draws against Atlanta and New York City where both of those teams have a good argument they deserve more than just a point. Now... Calm down, everybody. 
I still think they win the shield. They've got a six point lead on the LA Galaxy with a game in hand. Columbus is eight points behind. Yes, they got a game in hand and they're the only team that can get the 71 points or whatever the number is. And it makes October 2nd in Columbus a massive game when they host Miami. But it's the race for the most points that there's actually now a good debate to be had. They could go into the final game of the regular season against the New England Revolution who set the record in 2021 needing three points to break the record. Drama indeed. And before I go, Messi's played in 15 games this year. 14 goals and 15 assists. What the? Wednesday night, I'll be in Columbus for Campione's Cup where Columbus hosts Club America and try to win their third trophy at home in the last nine months. Then on Saturday night with the gauntlet of games, I will be in St. Louis where St. Louis hosts Sporting Kansas City as both teams try to salvage something, albeit very small, from a struggling 2024 season. City Park always delivers. And will they even more so knowing Sporting Kansas City will be exhausted coming off the U.S. Open Cup Final Wednesday night in L.A. All of this on MLS Season Pass on Apple TV. (laughs) 